I'm Lynette Zhang, Chief Market Analyst here at ITM Trading, a full service physical gold and silver dealer. And you know, we all know that it's important to have a plan these days and I hope your plan's in place. But I'm gonna go to questions today and I'm gonna start with Blake D. And he says, I believe you anticipate hyperinflation similar to that of Venezuela. Yes, I do indeed. Jim Rickards and Gregory Manorino have recently stated that since money velocity is down, it is, they anticipate deflation instead of hyperinflation with the possibility of hyperinflation in the future. What are your thoughts? Well, my thoughts are they're absolutely 100% correct because they're the same they're different sides of the same coin. And a stock market implosion, like we had last March, that's deflation. And real estate imploding, that's deflation. So they're talking about the monetary velocity and deflation, but let me break those two out because it'll make a little bit more sense. And especially for those that are new to the channel and haven't heard this before, but monetary velocity, uh, monitors or tracks the number of times that money changes hands. And so you can kind of use it in some ways as a level of confidence or the ability to spend money, right? So if you take on a lot of debt, initially it will make you look like you're very, very wealthy and you're out there, you're taking on debt, you're spending money, you're buying cars, you're buying houses, you're buying jewelry, you're buying whatever you're buying but you still then have to pay that debt. And when your income does not grow up or, or go up commensurate with your level of debt, then at some point you have less new money to spend. Once you max out those credit cards, you have less new money to spend because you have to spend it servicing the old. So that is definitely one way that the monetary velocity and that's why it's been tracking down, frankly, since 97, and why you may have heard me say that we hit peak debt in 97. But going back to that confidence piece, if you are generating income and you're confident that that income is going to continue, then you would have a higher level of comfort to go out and buy that, <clears throat> excuse me, buy that car and take on new debt. So uh, you have to, so the universal basic income is what I think is going to trigger, <clears throat> excuse me. I think the unleashing of the universal basic income is what's going to make that monetary velocity chart move up in a pervasive way. And that will indicate that we are now in hyperinflation. But the problem with all of this debt and the reason why that's been tracking down for all of that time, that's deflationary. You have to have, you, you might've heard of the reflation trade. There is only one way, only one, so it makes it pretty easy, one way to fight deflation and that is with inflation. So I would say that Jim Rickards, Gregory Manorino and many others are saying the same thing. Maybe we're saying a little bit differently, but uh, yeah, there is, that's what, that's what the Fed's been fighting. Good, goodness gracious, quite honestly, that's what they've been fighting since the 80s, since the 70s. Since we went on to this pure debt system, they have been, the Federal Reserve has been fighting deflation. And as we saw last March, they fought hyper deflation as the markets imploded, with hyperinflation, with all of that money for free. And they're still fighting it. That's why they're doing, you know, oh my gosh, we can't have this recession. That's why they're sending out all the stimulus checks. That's why they still have interest rates anchored at zero. That's why it's whatever it takes, we will do whatever it takes. That's what they're fighting. So Gabby asks, could you elaborate on investing to foreign, oh, I guess you meant in foreign currencies. How is that related to the US dollar inflation? Well, essentially when they say, oh, strong dollar, weaker dollar, what they're actually referring to is against 
other currencies, right? So if the dollar is stronger, it's because the euro, let's say the euro is weaker. So uh, investing in foreign currencies, it's not something that I do because personally, I know they're all fiat based, government based. They are all inflating whatever little bit remains in the purchasing power value, they're inflating it all away. So unless you're traveling to a foreign country, then then I would not invest in foreign currencies because look at the, the central banks globally admit to, to manipulating their currencies. All central bankers admit to it. Now they don't call it manipulation. They call it intervention. But what do you think that is? So what is far more important to us, you and me and everybody that's watching this video is how much that currency can buy. How much can that $20 bill in the US or 20 euro note in the, in the euro, in, Europe, how much can that buy? That's what we really care about. And because of that nominal confusion, it buys you less and less and less. I had a $20 bill in July of 1971. I had a brand new $20 bill, or I could have had a brand new one, I don't really know, in, 19, in September of 1971. They look pretty much the same. And they all say, Federal Reserve note, which is a debt instrument. Well, the second one said that Federal Reserve note. I didn't know that anything had changed. I was 17. I was in that vicinity, 16, 17, 18. So I was old enough to know that something was going on, but not really old enough to understand what was going on. I can buy, I used to buy a handbag. I wish I bought more gold with it, but I used to buy handbags, leather handbags for 20 bucks. Now, can you buy a leather handbag for 20 bucks? No, because the dollar's lost that much value. Is it that those handbags are worth that much more? No, it's because the currency is worth that much less. So, uh, you know, if you're investing on far in foreign currencies, I don't know why you're doing it, to be perfectly honest with you. We're all in the same boat, even if the dollar happens to be weaker or stronger against another currency. And when you ask how this is related to the US dollar inflation, it's because they are all fiat currencies and globally, every central banker has, they state, we need more inflation. And what they're really telling you is that fiat currency is overvalued and we are taking it down. You know what currency I like? Here's 20 bucks, face value. $20, one ounce of gold. Which would you rather have? This, which in today's current market, it's still severely undervalued, but the last time I looked at it earlier today, it was at what, 1745 or something like that? Hmm, $20 bill, nominally identical. $20 face value gold coin, worth a whole lot more in terms of this, in terms of fiat. So me, this is what I want. This is what I accumulate, not this. This I need for short-term barter, not long-term savings. And Lisa from Instagram asks, I work as a nurse practitioner. I wanted to do travel work for a long time and I finally have an opportunity to do so, but I am very disturbed by the events of the world. If you were my big sister, would you advise me to do this or would you advise me to find a little piece of land and hunker down? My, my boys are grown, so it's just me now. Well, Lisa, you know, I kind of faced a similar thing back in like 2008 to, because I was getting ready to retire and I was planning on doing a lot of traveling. I think that you have to follow your heart, but if you are indeed going to travel, you know, is it possible for you to keep some of this with your boys so that you have something to come home to? On top of that, 
If you are going to travel, an easy way to carry money with you, I mean, real money like gold with you, is, I, you know, when I would travel, I would get chains, silver and gold chains, so that if something happened to the currency when I was not there, I always had money. Because 100% of the time, you can convert gold and silver into any currency and therefore any good or any service. Now, do I think you should hunker down? <sighs> you know, I mean, I started preparing and I bought this property in 2010 so that I'm personally pretty much hunkered down. Maybe you can do a little bit of both. Where are your boys? Maybe they can help execute this piece and enable you to fly a little bit. But either way, no matter what you choose, you got to have gold. You got to have silver so that you have something to come home to. So it's, it's hard. You've got to do, you've got to follow your heart. Just make sure that all your bases are covered. That's all. That's all I'm going to say. You know, that's what I would do. And Robbie from Instagram asks, what's your advice to millennials who want to buy cryptocurrencies over gold and silver? Do both. Because cryptocurrencies, if the grid goes down, and we really, you know, the battle between the central banks and the private cryptocurrencies are heating up. So what's going to determine the outcome is going to be who wins that war. Do you know who's going to win that war yet? Because I don't. But there is no way, this I know, there is no way on God's green earth that any central banker is going to give up their money monopoly to any private corporation. Not going to happen. So what we don't really know is which ones are going to survive. Now, it certainly looks like Bitcoin and Ethereum will be in that basket. But if you look at the Bank for International Settlements, um, Money Flower, private cryptocurrencies, they're on there. They have a little space, but the biggest space is gold and silver. So the best advice that I can give to anybody that is in any kind of intangible instrument or intangible asset is in order to be truly and properly diversified, you got to have gold and you got to have silver that is completely out of the system. And that is, and real money, that truly diversifies your portfolio. And read. Don't take anybody's word for anything. Read it, study it. Part of the challenge that I have with the new money, the cryptocurrencies, the central bank, digital currencies, even fiat money, right? And all of the financial engineering that they're able to do because this stuff is so easily manipulated. They can't do it on this stuff. That's why they don't like it. That's why they don't want it as a base for money. There's plenty of gold. It's at what price in terms of fiat is the only determinant. But this requires fiscal responsibility. This does not only does it not require fiscal responsibility, it enables central banks, corporations, and governments to get very fiscally creative. That's called financial engineering. At some point, all of this will implode. And we're, cl we're much closer to that than we are not. That's just a fact. When the implosion occurs, what do you want to be holding or not holding as the case may be? That's what the problem is. So that's it for today. And those questions, you know, if you have not subscribed, please consider subscribing. Hit that bell next to it. We'll let you know when we go live. Um, the podcasts are out now up. People seem to really be loving it. You want to stay tuned to those because we have some very special things in the works. And, you know, for real time, follow our socials, uh, updates behind the scenes, I know that Edgar's been doing a lot of good job on behind the scenes. We even talked about some of them today. One of these days, I'm, 
I may let him post something with me getting ready <laughs> for you guys. When I get pretty in my dressing room, I will have a robe on. Don't worry. It will not be, it will not be X-rated, I promise. So if you like this, please give us a thumbs up and make sure that you share, 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 and keep those questions coming in. Um, the ones from Eric, questions at itmtrading.com and uh, we'll take them and answer them. And until next we speak, really want you to remember that it is time to cover your assets. You're going to do some cryptocurrencies. You're going to do some stocks or some other stuff. You got to do what you're comfortable doing. I can't tell you what to do. I can only tell you what I do for me. But if you choose to do that, choose to do this too. It's the only undervalued asset out there and it's the only real money out there. Why would you not want it? Until next we meet, please be safe out there. Bye-bye.